And if you see the ranking now, this is important. This ranking about the energy efficiency is very important. Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and today's video will be interesting is because we are going to look at a paper which says energy efficiency across programming languages. Now before we jump into this paper, I want to give you a backstory because that's very important. The thing is, I was born, brought up in Mumbai. So I'm, I'm used to the hot weather and humidity. Then recently I shifted to Bangalore. And then because it's a cold place compared to Mumbai, I feel Bangalore much better in terms of climate. So I was talking to a few locals after shifting here and they mentioned that Bangalore was much cooler before, I mean 20, 20 years before, and there was no IT industry basically in Bangalore. And then before the IT industry came here, Bangalore was the awesome place to live in India. And then I thought, why it's, there's so much change here? Because earlier they used to say it was around 20 degrees and now it's almost 30 degrees in the summer. And then I thought, okay, maybe because of the industries, it, it, it is happening now. And also on the other hand, we have something called climate change. And recently, this year especially, in fact last year also, we have seen a lot of climatical problems all over the world in terms of heat wave or cold wave or unexpected rain. And then I thought, something is wrong. Of course, we are talking about climate change from a long time, but yes, something is wrong. And then uh, I just searched on Google. I got to this page. Now this is the website which is Reset Digital for Good. Uh, I was just searching about climate change and this came in the first five results and then I clicked on it and when I was scrolling down, of course when you talk about climate change as a human, it is your responsibility to take care of it now. We have destroyed the entire world so it becomes, it, it makes sense for us to preserve it. There are multiple ways of doing that. Of course, there are few ways which we know, right? Planting trees, uh, then moving to the 100% green energy or green power. Okay, we are talking about EVs, but there are debates on EVs as well. So when you say we have electric vehicle, how that power is coming to you? Of course, you're not using any fuel, you're not using petrol, diesel, but how you're getting that energy? Of course, that energy is, is generated with multiple options and one of the options is coal, which is a cause of CO2, right? And uh, so yeah, we are just searching for a way to get 100% green power, maybe using solar panels. Next is saving energy. So we'll, we'll come back to saving energy later. Uh, there's one more thing which is important here is avoid plastics, which we are trying to do. So uh, once I came to know about, of, of course, right, in our childhood, we don't know about these problems, right? So when I got a bit of maturity, I understood we have to use less plastic, try to carry your own water bottle wherever you go and uh, the type of uh, plastic bags you use should be also biodegradable. So now I have this liberty of spending extra to buy those biodegradable plastic bags, right? So those things I'm doing, okay? Next is uh, sharing is caring. So if you want to buy something, try to get it secondhand. That's what I did last, uh, recently. I bought a new card, but not a new card. It's a, it's a secondhand card. So again, for different reasons, but then that's what we can do, right? If you're not using something, sell it to someone else, they will use it. At least we are not producing something new, right? Uh, try to reduce your digital footprint. Now, this is quite interesting. It's because every time you use, example, it, it also says, right? So one single provider, which is Netflix, currently consumes 15% of world's internet bandwidth. And you'll be saying, what's wrong with that? So the thing is, every search generates CO2. Uh, you can see here, every search query we type, every email we send is causing CO2 emissions. So next time when you're doing something, Think about this, you're actually causing CO2 emission. In fact, we can also say, by watching this video now, you're doing the same thing. You know, that was one of the questions, should I make this video? Because otherwise I'm actually creating a lot of emissions, especially the lights, the camera, the production, YouTube will consume a lot of bandwidth, but still I'm doing that, okay? So maybe I will just try to adjust that by planting a tree or do, while doing something good. So there's also one option which they suggest, instead of using a Google search, we can also use some green search. With every search, they plant a tree. Again, I'm not, I have not tried it, so I can't say, but yeah, there's, there are options. Now, then I was thinking, okay, who am I? I am a software developer, right? I teach programming. So there are certain things which I can do. So as a human who is living in this world, who is using all these resources, I can control certain things from my side, but how can I do something good for the entire world by sharing the knowledge, okay? And then I thought, okay, I can do that in my domain. I'm not expert in other domains, so I can't talk about it, right? So let me talk about programming. And then what I did is, if you go up here, it also says about saving energy. And this I'm trying to do from a long time. In fact, 
uh, every time I am in some other room. And if I go out of that room, I make sure that the fan, the lights, everything is off, the AC is off. Even in the office, I try to do that. Example, if, if people are sitting here, I try to say almost, I, I always try to convince them that whenever you go up from your desk, Make sure that you put your computer on sleep, make sure AC is off, make sure lights are off when you're going out. Now that's not because just I want to save the, save the bill. Of course, that's one, one of the important aspects. But also, by doing this, by not switching off the lights when it is not in use, you are causing CO2 emission, right? Okay, now keeping that in mind, as a programmer, when you build application, of course, the entire world is using it. See, in the earlier days, things were different, right? If you talk about year 2000, 2005, Yes, the IT industry was there, but a general human or an average human was not that dependent on those services. Of course, companies were using it. Uh, and if you want some extra services, you can do it. But now, if you think about the world, everything is happening with the help of computers. If you want to open a bank account, you do that online. If you want to transfer money, you do that online. If you want to watch a movie, you don't go to a single screen. You, everyone have their own mobile phone, everyone have their own computers, and they watch it on their own. Imagine everything is happening with the help of computers. How much? CO2 we are generating. Now I'm not asking you to stop using it. Of course, if you can try, try to use these devices less as possible. So next time when you're watching a phone or watching some reels on Instagram just for fun, also think about it. You're not just wasting time, you are generating CO2. Yeah, if you're learning, if you're doing something well, if you're watching some educational videos for yourself, that makes sense. But just for the entertainment purpose, don't just script scrolling on any platform. On the other hand, what if, let's say, in the entire world, there are X amount of hours people are watching content on the internet and it causes X number of CO2 emission. What if we can do something to have that thing constant where I can't stop people from watching unwanted content, but what if I can make it more efficient? What if the amount of energy it takes to basically use that particular application is less? By doing that, we are actually reducing the CO2 emission, right? That's what, so I, again, everything was coming in my mind as so I started doing my research. And then I came across this paper. Now, this is not a new paper. This was, I think this was released in 2017. Now, this paper, the topic is energy efficiency across programming languages. Now, I'm a big fan of programming languages. I have worked on more than 15 languages now or 12 languages. At this point, I don't remember all. I, I, currently, I only work with one or two. But then I have worked on those programming languages and I have also worked on compiled languages, VM languages, interpreted languages, and I have my own preference for those languages. I'm a big fan of Java. Of course, you will see that in the video as well. I'm a big fan of C language, also the Rust, which is coming up. Now, the reason when I was happy with those languages is C is one of the fastest language. Java, I think it's more structured and it's also fast compared to the other languages, right? Rust is, I think, will replace C soon because it is fast and it has a lot of modern features. Now, when I was going through this paper, of course, I will put that link in description. You can read the entire paper. It took me some time to understand the entire thing. In fact, I'm not 100% sure now, but yeah, I tried to understand maximum here. Now, this is uh, from ACM, so we can trust it. And also, it is in 2017, so we can go forward. Now, uh, it talks about multiple things, but one thing is important. See, when you talk about programming languages, of course, we have our own preference, right? So example, if I love Java, I'm not asking you to love Java. You might love some other languages to work on. Okay, a lot of people say programming is just a tool, but yeah, I think once you start working in a particular technology, you find that love or passion for that particular technology, right, or language. So if we talk about languages, there's a lot of languages which are very fast and there are a lot of languages which are slow. So can we say, one way to reduce the energy for a particular use case is also by making it faster. What if you can build an application in multiple languages and you can see the speed, right? So the faster the application runs, that means that will consume less energy. Even I was to think that at till one point. But then when you understand that, there's also one thing. Energy is actually not just equal to time, but also the power. Let's say what one particular language does the task in two seconds and the other language does the task in five seconds. So you will say, which is more efficient? It is your two seconds programming language, right? But what about the power consumption? Example, when you play games on your laptop or mobile phone, it, con it consumes a lot of battery, right? On the other hand, if you are just browsing the internet on the same amount of time, it is consuming less battery. 
So it's not just about time, it's also about the power it is taking for that particular execution, right? So we can't simply say faster is better. It's because there's something called power as well. And that's why if you look at the applications which runs on the wearable devices like watch, mobile phone, laptops, they try to make it more battery auto optimizes because a user should be able to use that device without charging for a longer time, right? So those are properly optimized. But what about those applications which are there on the servers, which is continuously connected to the power and also desktops? Now going down, so they have done a lot of research here and they have used 10 different algorithms or programs to check the speed and energy consumption. And uh, they have used something called computer language benchmark game to test it. And also they have used some well-known algorithms or programs to check it. In fact, you can find those names here. So these are the programs they have used and you can see the entire, you can read the entire article. So basically when you talk about languages, you can divide the languages in four styles here, right? We have functional languages like we have Ruby, we have JavaScript is also functional, right? We have imperative language which is C, C++, object oriented, we have C++, Java, uh, Smalltalk, Rust, scripting is this, we have Python there, right? Python is also object oriented, it's supposed object oriented, yeah. But if you go down and if you find something interesting here, now the way they have done the measurement is not just based on the CPU time, it's also about your DRAM time, right? Or DRAM energy consumption. Example, when you play game, it just not just consume CPU time, but also some other memory. GPU is not considered here, but let's talk about CPU and DRAM. And if you go down, so look at the ranking here. Now, if you talk about energy efficiency here, look at this. C language, if you do a particular task, let's say binary tree task, and if you use C language, it will consume this number of joules, 39 joules here. I think it's the unit is joules here. Is it joules or watts? How they're calculating energy here? The energy is calculated in joules, okay? So if you go down here, you can see it is consuming 39 joules and the time taken, it's, it's, I think it is in milliseconds. So it's almost one second and then the amount of memory it is consuming, it is 131, right? And C++ almost same is because C and C++ run on the same platform. Then we got something called Rust, which is a new thing. It consumes more memory and also it consumes more energy. But if you go down to look at all the famous languages, like we have Java somewhere in between. Java is energy efficient compared to other languages, but the only concern here is the amount of memory it takes. The more memory it takes, it also impact on your energy consumption. But the ratio, if you compare, is not huge. The maximum energy is consumed by your CPU, not by DRAM. And if you go down uh, famous languages, we have uh, C Sharp here, just below Java. And then uh, we also have a language from Facebook hack. And you can see we have JavaScript here, which consumes a lot of energy for the same task. And if you go down, there's also Python, which look at the energy consumption of Python for one task. It's 1700, it's almost 1800 joules. So just think about this. Every time you use a Python application now, you're actually causing a lot of CO2 em emission, right? That's what you have to think about. I'm not saying which is the best language here. This is not a video about choosing a best language or uh, which is the most loved language. No, this video is not about that. The video is more about next time when you think about any programming language or think about anything which you do on the internet, think about energy you're wasting and causing CO2 emission. I think that's where we can actually work on climate change. Let me know your thoughts in the, in the comments, but that's what I'm thinking now. And they have not done just with one particular algorithm, with multiple algorithms, and you can see the ranking changes. Different algorithms have a different way of doing things, right? Uh, so if you see the uh, first algorithm, or first program here, I'm not sure about this programming or this uh, concept, but with different use cases, you can see Rust tops here, with the least energy here, and C goes down. And if you see Java, it's still, Java is in top five in this case. And if you see JavaScript, it went up here, and Python stays at the bottom. And you can also compare uh, the languages in terms of, is it compiled languages, like we have C, C++, uh, it is mentioned here as well. Fortran, uh, Pascal, Rust, they all compile languages. VMs, we have uh, C Sharp, Java, Erlang, Lisp. For uh, interpreted languages like Python, we have there JavaScript. Now by default, these languages like Java, uh, the interpreted languages consumes more energy and it's much slower. And if you can see the seconds here, this compiled languages except Go, everything else looks cool here, right? So you can see the energy consumption, C, C++. And look at the VMs. In VMs, there's only one language with Excel, which is Java. 
And in terms of interpreted languages, I think JavaScript is much better than Python here. And also Hack is doing much better than JavaScript. Now in terms of other algorithms, you can see, uh, you can compare it here. Java is doing better in this case. And yeah, so in general, C is doing better. C, Rust, Java. And in this case, it is JavaScript. Now, why I'm focusing more on Python here? Why I don't think Python is not doing well? Of course, it consumes a lot of energy. But the, also the problem is because of AI, of course, everything in future is AI, right? And one of the primary language to build AI models is Python. And just think about it. How much energy we are going to consume in future once AI gets full-fledged, right? Let's go down, let's understand this more. And if you see different, again, different algorithms, we have uh, different rankings, C is doing well here, Java is doing well here, JavaScript compared to Hack is doing well. And Python, nowhere, it's, it's excelling, right? Everywhere it is lagging behind. Now, that's the thing I wanted to show. And if you see the ranking now, this is important. This ranking about the energy efficiency is very important. Okay, so you can see we have C here, which is one. So if you compare all the other things with C, that's what we are doing now. So in terms of energy, C is the best one. Then we got Rust, C++, Ada, and Java. So if you talk about the modern languages and languages which are used, top five, I, think, I don't think we are using Ada anymore, but we have C, Rust, C++, and Java in top five. In terms of time, the speed, again, almost the same thing. Oh yeah, it's the same thing. But when it comes to memory, things changes. Pascal, anyway, we are not using it. So Go looks very energy efficient. Then we got C. Uh, Fortran we are not using. C++, Rust doing well here. And Java is way down. You can see Java actually consumes a lot of memory. So every time I build applications, I don't build my application on 8 GB RAM machines because Java IDE and everything takes more than 2.3 or 2.6 GB. But the thing is, if we talk about memory, yes, it takes more. If we talk about energy, it takes less energy. So somewhere we have to make a trade-off. I will always prefer energy efficient languages than memory efficient. Anything else we need to highlight here? Things looks good. So read this article, I will put the link in description and I would love to know your thoughts. And all this thing is just my research, okay? Nothing is, I mean, of course this research paper is there, but I'm not claiming that this is the best language or that best language. Just the thoughts of saving the world and uh, doing something for the climate change.